Hello, Kiplington 396. Patty! Yes, of course I'm coming. I was just about to leave. Uh, listen, I'm going to stop over in Manchester on the way to do a little shopping, so I'll call you from there. Oh, and Patty, I feel I should warn you, the subject of Robert Kahn is totally off the agenda for the whole holidays. I'm determined to have some fun. Yes, I'm serious. Yes, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Could I have a bunch of the yellow roses, please? You're bonny lass like you. Shouldn't be buying flowers for yourself. <laughs> Actually, they're for my sister. Here, allow me. No, really, I... Mr Khan! Thank you. I, uh, I believe these are for you. Good heavens, I don't know what to say. I mean, thank you, they're lovely. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here on business. I'm staying at the Piccadilly. Yes, so am I. Well, just for one night, I, I go off tomorrow morning. I don't know about you, but I'm hot and exhausted. I sympathise with housewives, and afternoon shopping's more exhausting than 20 speech days. I must look frightful. I've had no tea. I've got a terrible room on the fifth floor that looks like a scene from a Russian tragedy. I can't face it until I've had a glass of sherry. Uh, perhaps you'd care to join me? Unless you're rushing away to dine somewhere. Yes, I'd like that. Here, let me help you with your parcels. Here's your sherry. Thank you. Only this is mine. For the lovely flowers, I insist. Very well. But then you must dine with me, unless you have another engagement. I, I ordered you dry sherry. Do you like it? No. I mean, yes. Yes, I love dry sherry, and no, no, I haven't got another engagement. I'd, uh, I'd love to have dinner with you. How's Midge getting on with Mrs. Beddoes? Oh, much better. She's just fine. Oh, I am pleased. It, 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 it was a good idea, sending her to stay with Mrs. Beddoes, I mean. Yes, I know. So, when are you going back? Home, I mean. Uh, the day after tomorrow. Well, Mitch will be glad to see you. She talks about you with such affection. Always. Does she? Yes. Well, I'll be bringing her home for the last week of the holidays. Well, that's good. I mean, though, of course, Mrs. Beddoes has said she's welcome to stay, and maybe she's right. She needs a little fun in her life. She's a good woman, Mrs. Beddoes. You seem very close. Yes, we are. Well, if I'm to freshen up and write a note, which I should do, I suppose I'd better get a move on. What time shall we dine? 7.30. Would that suit you? Or a quarter to eight? 7.30? Why not? I am hungry, so... Till then. Oh, my, my parcels... No, 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 leave them. I'll have a porter bring them up. What floor did you say? Fifth floor. Room 517. Oh, how lovely. He was pleased to see me. I know he was pleased to see me. Oh, this is a dream. I shall wake up. No. Be sensible. He is a governor of the school. I am the headmistress. I've been good to Mitch. He's grateful. He couldn't not ask. He feels obliged. I wonder if I should wear my hair up. What shall I wear? <sighs> have I kept you waiting? Exactly one minute, 35 seconds. <sighs> Do you know, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this meal. I'm really quite hungry. Shall we order wine? Is your room small? What lovely music. Oh, dear, I'm sorry I'm talking too much. Oh, shut up, Sarah. You're making a fool of yourself. It's only a meal, for goodness sake. Breathe, sit up straight, smile and be confident. He likes you, or he would never have invited you to dinner. He's lonely. He needs female company. I could be anyone. That was a lovely meal. Did you enjoy it? Only you've hardly touched a thing. No. I thought I was hungry, but, uh... Look, do you like dancing? Oh, I love it. But I haven't danced in over a year, I think. Well, nor I. But for far more than that. You like it? What woman doesn't? 
I mean, do you remember the wartime dance mania? Were you ever at the Grafton Galleries? Once. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to rouse unwelcome memories. No, you didn't. So, what about this dancing? Well, what about it? It might be quite agreeable. Well, there doesn't seem to be much else to do in Manchester. Unless you like those film things. Well, I don't suppose there's a good film on. And I'm sure you'd loathe them. I'm sure I would. So, dancing it is then. Yes, why not? I cannot bear it. If I dance with him, I'm lost. It's not real, it's impossible. When did he last dance and with whom? Oh, I'm not jealous of his wife, of any woman he has held. Perhaps he'll hardly notice me. Perhaps he'll think I'm Muriel. Perhaps he'll forget I'm someone and only remember that he's enjoying himself. You dance very well, considering you haven't had much practice. Or well, perhaps it's like riding a horse. Or a bicycle. Never forget. Do you feel its rhythm and move with it? Well, I have a train to catch at eight o'clock, and I, I still have all those parcels to pack. Won't you let me get you another drink? I've drunk enough, far more than is seemly in a headmistress on holiday. I've forgotten you were a headmistress. But if you must go... Don't you think we shall both be tired? Well, then why not just sit? <laughs> well, it is still early. I doubt I'll sleep very well. It's so hot. So you don't have to hurry away, then? No. No, as a matter of fact, I've got to spend some time looking for somewhere for my wife. I'm sorry. It must be a grim business. Yes, it is. <laughs> but necessary. So, must she come to Manchester? Perhaps. I may be getting a job here at a riding school. But are you going to leave Maythorpe? I wonder if I can help it. But it's as well to have a second string to your bow. Depends what the government does for us. And the market. And the season, too. Can't tell him, farming. Depends on so many things outside yourself. Are you thinking of selling up, then? <laughs> the place is not mine to sell. It belongs to the bank. And the bank's in Snaith's pocket. And he wants the farm for his lunatics. <laughs> it's ironic, don't you think? Muriel's destined for a state asylum. And Maythorpe's fated to become one. It's natural enough to think that, but it's morbid. <sighs> you once said you think you know me. I still do. I think I do. You've watched me. I don't know what you mean. And you know me, eh? You see how I crack up in emergencies, how they've got me down. No. No, they haven't. They've got me down. I'll sell Maythorpe over my head. Castle's dying. Midge is better off with Mrs. Beddoes. Muriel doesn't even know me. And I'm giving you a hell of an evening. No. You don't want to leave me? This is not the end? <laughs> no, it need not be. Sarah. Do you mean that? I mean anything you like. Do you mean that I need not be alone tonight? Yes, I mean that. May I come to your room? Yes. It's the fifth floor, room 517. Wait half an hour. I will comfort him for just one night. Oh, this is the end. The end of security as a respectable professional woman. But I mean to have him. Drunk or sober. Feeling ill? Robert, here. 
Let me help you. I'll be, I'll be fine in a moment. What is it? Are you in pain? It's all right. I know what it is. It's my heart. I, I just need a moment. You look dreadful. I'm going to call a doctor. No, no, no. Nitrate of amyl. Little tin. In my waist pocket. No, no, no. no. In my room. 106. First floor. Here's my key. I'm dreadfully sorry. Oh, my God. I should tell the whole porter. I heard him here in the passage groaning, and I got him to my room. No, they know he's on the first floor. I shall say he knew me. I'm his daughter's school teacher. He felt ill and came to me for advice and fainted. Oh, I shouldn't have left him. What if he dies? I'll be ruined. What if he dies and a doctor could have saved him, and yet I did not fetch one? Oh, I will be guilty of his murder. This is my fault entirely. I made him dance, encouraged him to drink. I let him come to me. It was all too much for him, the heat, the excitement. What if I return and he's dead already? My God, what will I do? Oh, Robert, what are you doing to me? I'm being punished. I know it. I should never have had dinner. I should never have dared to dream. I should never have wanted him. Oh, if he dies, I would have killed him. Did you get it? Yes, here. Yeah. I'm going to call the doctor. No, 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 no. The ammo will do it. I feel so useless. Uh, it's passing. I'll be right in a few minutes. Do you know what it is? Angina. This stuff's marvellous. Campbell gave it to me. It's the only thing. Shh. No, don't talk. Just rest a little. Listen, I'm going to leave you for a moment. I shall tell them you felt unwell. So you came to me, the only person you know in the hotel. I'm your daughter's schoolmistress. They won't suspect anything. You don't look it. There's no need. I won't do anything, I'm all right. I can lie here for a few minutes. If you let me rest a little. Shall I put the light on? Fetch you a glass of water? No. Lie with me for a while. He's thinking about his wife. I deserve this. This story cannot have a happy end. It did not even have a happy beginning. I couldn't even amuse him for one evening. I have nothing, not even the joy of losing him, for he was never mine. It's been weeks now since my night with Robert Kahn. I've spent night after endless night going through it all in my mind. Why hasn't he contacted me? What if he's too ill? What if he blames me? Oh, I cannot bear it. I was drunk, intoxicated by the thrill of it all and lost my senses. I was foolish to believe it would end in anything but heartache and regret. Goodness sake, he is a governor. I am a headmistress. I teach his daughter, and now I have to face Mrs. Beddoes, knowing how close she is to him. What if she senses something is wrong? What if he has told her? She'll be horrified. She'll demand my resignation. My reputation will be ruined, and for what? Vote for Dolan. Come today and save your country. Don't let reaction strangle local government. Hello, Miss Burton. Hello, Barbara. This is me grandmiss. Hi, Alice. Grand to turn out the new show, love. 
Mind you, I heard they're serving tea and cakes. Can you tell us where, love? Yes, Mrs. Laverick, they are. Next to the refectory. They were, love. She's a bit modern mace. Well, for goodness sake, Barbara, take your gran to the staff dining room. I won't mind to sit down now, Babs. Oh, come on, gran. You are here to vote, you know. Joe? Joe? Excuse me. Today? Is he mad? <laughs> you tell me. Well, I'm sure he has his reasons. Oh, oh I'm sure he has. But whatever way you look at it, it comes under corrupt practices. Given a free feast to the villagers on election day, they could sow him for it. The castle was his foreman and his friend. Surely it's a mark of respect for the man. Come on, Sarah. You know as well as I do that Khan's in trouble. He's near closing on the farm. The man's in debt. And now with Snaith's lawsuit against him, he'll be ruined. Lawsuit? <laughs> you mean to say you didn't know? I thought you made it your business to know everything there is about the man you're slipping up, Sarah. Joe, be serious. Tell me. Snaith's going to bring a libel action against him. A libel suit? That'll be sure to ruin him. Why? He's spreading scandal, accusing councillors of buying up land so that they can sell it to the council later. The land is a proposed site for the new housing scheme. Which means the rates will go up and that means opposition. Calm. And I suppose there are two ways of getting rid of obstructionists, get them off the council and ruin them. The South Riding needs this new housing scheme. You, you need it. You know how much you want to improve the school. Well, if this housing scheme goes through, it won't mean just improvements. It could mean new buildings. You could double your intake of pupils. Sarah, ask yourself this. Why did Mrs. Holly die? Because she gave birth to a child under impossible conditions. The shacks are unsanitary and unfit for human consumption. You've seen them. They must go. And they'll be rehoused as part of the new housing scheme? The Leem Ferry Garden Village, yes. It's the only way. Ah, Estelle, there you are. I believe Huggins and Snaith are looking for you. Oh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Sarah. Think about it. I'll talk to you later. So... How are you coping, turning your school hall into a circus? Oh, I don't know. It's rather thrilling, welcoming the whole community into the school. And offering cream teas. Mrs Beddoes, I assure you, if you think the money has come from the school funds, then you're wrong. It's not where it comes from, it's why. Why? No, you tell me, Mrs Beddoes. Why has Calm decided to hold Castle's funeral on election day? And why is everyone also thrilled at the prospect of a free feast at Maythorpe? We do have refreshments on offer, yes, but at a small price. The upper fifths have been baking in their own spare time. All in a good cause, to raise money for the school funds. I don't doubt that for a moment. But whilst folk are here, enjoying your hospitality, looking around your school, seeing the stage of the place, listening to all the improvements you've dreamed up, well, happen they might just vote for the man who's driving around the streets promoting new housing and new schools. If that were true, which it is certainly not, Dolan would certainly get my vote. Though I'm sure you would say a wasted one, as I know you still hang on to the ridiculous notion that Robert Carr might win. I know what they're saying. I know who they want. And I also know what it means for Robert. I don't know about you, Miss Burton, but I don't believe in kicking a man when he's down. Especially a man I'm proud to call a dear friend. Miss Burton, Castle died two days ago. He was a big man, and we're in the middle of a heat wave. Khan was all for putting it off till tomorrow. But Hicks and Pudsey agreed it had to be today. The body was stinking the place out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll treat myself to one of your cream teas before I go and face Widow Castle. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. We brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the you. name oh, of the Lord. Thank you, Robert. It's a fine turnout. Is there to be a traditional wake at Mayfield? Yes. Yes, of course. I said I will take heed to my ways that I offend not in my town. I will keep my mouth, as it were, a bridle while the ungodly is in my sight. There are some who say you've deliberately chose to have the funeral today, you know. Yes, I know. And you? What do you think? 
You know what I think, Robert. I'm proud of you. What within me, and while I was thus musing, the fire kindled, and the last I spake, my tongue did magnify the Lord. Well, you did castle proud, Robert. No doubt all the men will be singing in the nag's head by now. <laughs> yes, and no doubt Smith and Dolan are celebrating their success. Yes, that's true enough. Well, they think they've got me where they want me. My lawyers think me a fool. Perhaps I am. Perhaps I should never have started this whole business. But damn it, Snaith is a thief and Huggins a cheating swindler. If I'm to go down beaten, I might just as well go down in a grand uproar as retire meekly. If I could expose this scandal before I went, I would at least leave my mark on the county. Then I'd not be forgotten. So, are you still thinking of giving up, Maythorpe? Yes. The bank must take it, and if they decide to sell it to the Public Health Committee, then that's their business. Today must have set you back a pretty penny. I promised to stand by Mrs Castle. Castle and the boys adored Muriel, you know. Yes, I know. Many did. Said she rode like a wild cat. Loving Muriel has cost me a great deal. And yet, till recently, I've never even asked myself if she was worth it. And are you now? I don't know. Lately, I'm not sure of anything. Robert, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. If I hadn't forced myself upon her. Dr McLennan said there's nothing they can do for her. I've known it for a long time. The place is expensive because the treatment there is to effect cures. But there is no cure for Muriel. They can do nothing for her now. Nothing except keep her warm and clean. You've had a hell of a day. And I suppose I should really be thinking of going home. Yes. A hell of a day. Uh, Emma, stay and, and have a top-up. Yes. Why not? Might help me sleep. I don't know what's wrong with me. Most nights I'm still wide awake for the dawn chorus. Listen to me, wittering on. You must think me a right old fool, Robert. Not at all. I've, uh, I've been talking to my solicitors this week and I wanted to ask you a tremendous favour. Don't answer now, think it over. If anything happened to me, would you be Midge's guardian? Oh, my dear boy, I'm, I'm old enough to be your mother. Well, I dare say. But you're young enough in some ways to be my daughter. And I was nearly knocked down by a taxi in Manchester recently. If anything happened to me, a child would be rather lost. And she wouldn't be a financial burden. I do know how Jim can be. I've kept up my insurance. 5,000 when I'm 60 or if I die before that. It's hers, of course. Only... I want to be sure I'm not putting too much on you. No. No. I love the child. I'd do anything. I know you would. I exploit your good nature. I always have done. I... I don't think you know how fond I am of you. Perhaps I do. By the way, that reminds me. Um, I have a little present for you, too. For me? <clears throat> yes. I want you to have it. Oh. Have I to open it now? Yes, if you wish. Oh, Robert. I don't know what to say. I want you to have it. But are you sure? Isn't this the brooch you bought for Muriel after Midge was born? Yes. But surely you'd want Midge to have it. Midge has a whole lifetime to wear beautiful things. This is for you to enjoy. Jack! 
Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. I must have dropped off. <laughs> I'm sorry if I startled you. No, not at all. You just looked... Well, I wasn't expecting to see you. You must be shattered. Oh, that's only to be expected at election time. As you know, Dolan got in. He's a good man. I hope you didn't mind me waiting for you. No, of course not. Actually, I'm glad you came by. I've got some happy news about Lydia Holly. Her father has met a reasonably wealthy widow. Apparently, she's famed all over the South Riding for her splendid rabbit pies. <laughs> they plan to marry soon, and she's taking the whole family to live with her. Which, of course, means Lydia can come back to school in the new autumn term. A happy ending. Yes, a very happy ending. And Khan, have you seen him since he lost the election? No. No, I haven't. But that's not why I'm here. I came to wish you luck. This is the great morning of your grand inspection, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I think she's coming in about half an hour. How nice of you. Well, you'll be all right. The school's all right. You're doing a grand piece of work. You're very much appreciated here in the South Riding, you know. Oh, Joe, thank you. You're very kind. Come in. Miss Jameson, what can I do for you? Don't tell me Miss Teasdale's here already. No, no, Miss Burton, it's not Miss Teasdale. It's uh, Mr Khan. I told him you were with someone, but he insisted he's... Uh, he doesn't look very happy, actually. He appears to be in rather a rage. Oh, does he? Fighting talk. Do you want me to stay? No, thank you, Joe. Uh, Miss Jameson, go and tell Mr Khan that I'll be free in ten minutes. If he'd be good enough to wait, I can see him then. waited all through the summer holidays for him to write or call me. Anything just to know how he is. Since we met in Manchester, I've not been able to think about anything else. I've tortured myself because he was ill and that he might be dying. Was he embarrassed? Was he shocked or sickened by my crude pursuit? Or what was I thinking of? Why did I have to spoil it? I could have helped him. I could have been his friend. I could have comforted him. Come in. Mr Khan, good morning. You're quite a stranger. Won't you sit down? Good morning. I couldn't come to the last governor's meeting. So I understood. But I've just got the minutes... And I see that you've managed to persuade the other governors to promise you fresh buildings if the new housing estate goes through. I shall need them. It's perfectly ridiculous. Don't you realise that I shall probably double my numbers? And who's going to pay for them? The ratepayers and the Board of Education. The ratepayers? Because the rates have gone up, I suppose you think you can get anything? Not at all. I only ask for what is reasonable. I feel I may be more likely to get it now. Since the elections? Yes. The new county council seems quite sensible. Because people like me aren't there any longer? Perhaps. I suppose you think because I've been got rid of from the council I'm going to retire from all public work. You're wrong. I hadn't thought very much about it. You're very thick with Snaith and Estelle. Perhaps you don't know that they have been organising one of the worst pieces of corruption that has been practised in the South Riding Council since it started. I've heard that you've been saying so, but it isn't proved yet. Are well, you hoping that I shall resign from the Board of Governors and leave you a free hand? I haven't thought about it. Then I'm telling you I shall do nothing of the kind. I intend to stay as long as I can. I shall denounce your fine friends and do my utmost to keep down your mad extravagance. I warn you, you are making a fool of yourself. You think you can stop progress and reason. You can't. 
any more than you can make the moon stand still. Why should you think that your ways are progressive? I know what I'm doing. Do you? I can't understand why you let me keep your daughter at my school, if that's what you think of me. But let me tell you, it's no privilege for us to keep her. She is, without exception, the most tiresome, hysterical, unwholesome, worst-mannered child I have ever had to deal with. And I shall be delighted if you take her away. You are asking me to remove my daughter. I shall be delighted. You may think, as a governor, you confer an extraordinary privilege on the school by leaving her here. I assure you that, really, we can do quite well without her. And without her father on the board. The matter hardly rests in your hands. Oh, really? I do love your notion of governorship. You come bounding in here like a bucolic Mussolini and expect me to sit down meekly under your denunciations. And there's a ladybird crawling up your collar. If you had the slightest notion how funny you looked. Damn and blast you, woman! And good day to you, sir! Oh, Miss Teasdale, it is nice to see you again. You found your way all right. Do come in. That is... that was one of our governors, Mr Khan of Maythorpe. One of your local problems? Yes, indeed. One of my local problems. I'm hungry, Lid. Tough. When's dinner going to be ready? You've only just had your breakfast. Stop moaning. Help me hang this washing out. Oh, that's boring. Any word, I can't even reach line proper. You might not be able to yet, but one day you soon will, and then it'll be your job. I'm not washing your stinking clothes all my life. I've got other, bigger, better things to do with my time. I thought you'd gone off all that flipping book learning. Never said no about books or learning. Maybe I'm going to be a dancer or an actress on the film. Blimey, are you, Lid? Is that because we're getting a new mother? Don't call her that. She's not our mother and never will be, do you hear? She is. Soon she's going to be our stepmother and there's now you can do about it. Kitty? Good heavens, what on earth's the matter? She ate me. Because I said you was going to be our new man. I'm telling me dad. I'm telling me dad on you. Can I help you fold the sheets? They can be tricky, especially when it's windy. They always remind me of sails, you know. Great white sails blowing in the wind. White? These sheets haven't been white since the day we got them. And then they were Sally Army. We're getting out new around here. Only given. Second hand. Almost worn out. The only time we ever get anything is because no one else wants it. And I suppose that includes me then, does it? We don't need a new mother. Just because me and your dad are getting wed, Lid, it doesn't mean he doesn't love your mother. My name's Lydia, not Lid. Or love you any less. Lydia, your father's very proud of you. He's always saying how clever you are, how much he wants you to do well, to go back to school and then one day to go on to college. Oh, you've all decided, have you? Well, you do want to go back to school, don't you? Why should I tell you anything? Why should you care? Because I know what it must have meant to you having to give it up, not knowing if you'd ever be able to go back again. Well, you can go back to school. You liar. You're just saying that. I said I'd look after us all. I promised me, ma'am. Dad wasn't even there. He never saw her face. How she tried to wait for him, and all the time it was with you. You and me dad waiting for her to die. I hate you. I hate you, Bo. Lydia, come back. I never even knew your dad then. It isn't easy for us, but we need each other. We all need each other. What a mess, a matter, child. I can't. I can't come back to school. I promised. I promised me, ma'am. Do try and calm down. Now, that's it. Now, tell me calmly. You promised your mother what? To look after everyone. So then who's going to look after you? That's what she says. That woman, that widow Brimsley. But surely you'd be glad of the help. That's what you want, isn't it? I did think she wanted to help us. Then I heard about that new housing scheme. I know if she marries me, Dad, she'll jump the list, get him first, have a brand new house, then they might not want us. Me. It's for you, Lydia, don't you see? Everyone wants you to have a chance, you deserve it. Even your mother knew you were special, talented. 
I know she was very proud of you. It can't have been easy for us knowing she was dying and leaving you with the burden of a young family to look after. It wasn't Mam's fault, it was him, me dad. He killed Mam and I hope he kills her next. You don't mean that. I know what people really think of us. They think we live like pigs. They feel sorry for us. Well, they're right. We are pigs. Now you're just being silly. Am I? Don't we live like pigs? Aren't you always scolding me for my messy books and early stockings and filthy hands and rough ways? I know you prefer the likes of Midge Khan just because her father's a governor and they live in a big house and talk all la I know it's always their type that get on. They're the clever ones, not me. I should have never been born clever and everyone knows it. Now listen to me, Lydia. My father was a blacksmith. He drank too much and he never had any time for me or my mother. He was a lazy bully and he believed women were only there to wait on him. I've known poverty and hardship. And I know what it's like to lose sight of your dreams. But don't you see, you've been given a second chance. Your mother would want you to be happy. You must seize every opportunity, take every offer open to you. Believe me when I say, Lydia, the world needs the sort of woman you could be. So I should take it? Yes, and come back to school. But if I take it, I'll only end up having to pay for it again. Just like before. I came back to school and I was happy. Happier than anyone has a right to be. And then look what happened. Mum, Dad. We have to believe that the bad times won't last forever. And we will see the sun again. You must take a hold of life with both hands. Take it, embrace it. And if you have to pay for it, then at least you can say you've lived. And you had the courage to try. And I know you have the courage, Lydia. I know you have tremendous courage. Like you, miss. Yes. Just like me. I'm sorry to drag you out on a day like this. No, really. I'm glad to be here. Actually, I do love a deserted seafront after a good dam. <coughs> oh, but I don't suppose it's very good for you. No, no, I'm fine, really. So what can I do for you? Don't be angry. But I must know, Joe, is Khan still going on with his idiotic case? Actually, I've just come back from seeing Snaith. Has he decided? Yes. He hasn't got a leg to stand on. Snaith's going ahead with the libel case. He is. What damages is he asking? Ten thousand. Ten thousand? Oh, Joe, he'll be ruined. <laughs> I'm sure you're right, sir. Snaith does realise that. And how true is it? I mean, is there any way... Is he to lose? Well, I was surprised to hear that Khan has, in actual fact, made several perfectly true statements. He... <coughs> how? <coughs> Stillman did raise a mortgage and sell to Tadman, and Huggins acquired, in the name of a chap called Athorn, the sheds on Lean Ferry Waste. But I don't understand. Why did Huggins... Because he had reason for marrying off a girl to Athorn. Oh, heavens, it gets worse. Huggins was sure the council were going to build on Lean Ferry Waste. He persuaded Tadman and Drew to come in with them and get hold of the rest of the site. Then they'd be in a position to force the council to pay through the nose. So what are you saying, Joe? Snakes knew this? But this is all just what Khan said. Yes, I know. Then, well, then Khan has got his case. Oh, no, because the Joint Council is on persuasion, not going to recommend Lean Ferry Waste. Not going to? No, no. Snaith's going to go with Schedule B, reckons it's more convenient. It's a fair distance from Kingsport, but if the Electricity Association run their new light railway with cheap workman's tickets, it'll be ideal, especially for Snaith. Oh, but, Joe, this means that Robert Khan was right all along. So I said, when that baby's ready to be born, she'll soon know about it. And yes, folk will talk. But if she's going to be its mother, then she... Oh, uh, Robert! Robert! Uh, excuse me, please. Robert! Dear boy! Robert! Oh, oh dear. Excuse me. Robert! Robert! Oh! Oh! Emma! Oh, Robert! Oh, dear, come uh, on, sit down. You look exhausted. Oh, good heavens, <laughs> I'm far too old to be chasing young men round the Civic Hall, Robert. And I must be going <sighs> deaf in my old age. Yeah, in a world of your own, more like. How are you, my dear? Really, I've hardly seen you. You're wearing the brooch. Oh, it's a permanent fixture. Oh, I was going to keep it for 
very special functions, but I'm, I'm so thrilled with it, I can barely bring myself to take it off nights. I'm pleased. I only wish I'd given it to you sooner. Where are you off to? Uh, home now. I'm just fetching my horse. Oh. And uh, what's all this I hear about your grand blow-up with Sarah Burton? <laughs> yes. I'll say one thing for Sarah Burton. She's got a temper, hasn't she? You mean you both have. Whatever were you quarrelling about? I'm damned if I know. Oh, yes. The new school buildings. But you know, really. She asks a bit much. She practically told me to take Midge away. Robert. It's not serious. Not on my part. Can I tell her so? If you want to. Give her my love. Tell her she's a grand lass. I wouldn't miss quarrelling with her for the world. south riding but from myself I want to die I thought that time work and necessity had helped it has only trapped me and now what have I left my work my ambition my reputation whatever I do my success must be his failure What does it matter now? I've won. I have the grand promise of new buildings. All this transformation of the county, the new villages, a school of glass and chromium and cement. All these were witnesses to his defeat. He had tried to hold the South Riding in his own likeness, to preserve tradition, to dam the tide of change. And I have helped ruin him. If only he had loved me even for an hour, this would have not been unendurable. Miss Burton, might I have an urgent word? Yes, very well. It's about Midge Khan. Yes, we'll spit it out. What about Midge Khan? Well, she hasn't handed in a project work, and her matriculation sheets are blank. I mean, it would appear that she hasn't completed any of the set work, and she's drawn a picture of what I believe is her father riding a horse instead of the history essay. Let me see. <sighs> Sir Robert Kahn, the brave knight of Maythorpe Castle. <laughs> oh, dear. Horse looks more like a donkey now for the brave knight. <laughs> you find this amusing? Would that be all? Yes. Um, good morning. <laughs> there, there, my child. You let it out. You let it all out, Mitch. It's all right. He was a very special father. He loved you very much. Sarah, are you all right? Joe. Hello, Joe. 
I've just heard it. Yes, I cannot bear to go out. I suppose everyone is talking about it. Yes, it's in all the papers. Will you read it for me? Well, if you insist. Please. It is feared that Mr Robert Kahn, well-known Yorkshire sportsman and gentleman farmer, who for 13 years was a member of the South Riding County Council for the Division of Maythorpe, has met with a fatal accident. Last night he left the Crown Inn stables at Kiplington at about 6pm to ride home to his residence, Maythorpe Hall. On his way he had arranged to call at Spring Farm for a business interview with his tenant, Mr Eli Dixon, as he did not appear, Mr Dixon visited Maythorpe Hall and learned from the servants that Mr Kahn had not returned. Go on, please, Joe. Uh, he quickly summoned help from some of Kahn's men and Mr Harold Hicks of Maythorpe noticed a new and substantial fall of earth from the cliff and on it partially buried the body of a horse. The horse was later recognised as the famous Black Hussar, for many years winner of the Hunt Cup at the South Riding Agricultural Shows. Mr Kahn was riding this animal when he left the Crown Inn. His riding crop and hat were also found, but so far there has been no trace of his body, which, it is thought, may have been washed out to sea. Would you like some tea, Joe? Only if it's what you want. No, I'm sick of drinking tea. I think I'm sick of living. Would you like me to take you home? I don't know what to do with myself. Silly, isn't it? I can't help wishing the hall was full of my girls. Singing hymns and mumbling their prayers. I keep thinking about poor Miss Sigglesweight the lovely letter she wrote thanking me for being so understanding after her breakdown. That she feels sure I will go far and she will... She will always rejoice in my well-deserved success. <laughs> well-deserved success. Miss Sigglesweight was the victim of bad mass bullying and I left unpunished the ringleader of her tormentors. I have sacrificed the most distinguished scientist we have ever had on our staff for Midge Kahn. It was Midge who I should have sent away. The child was vain and hysterical and a bad influence on the whole school. Oh, I treated Miss Sigglesweight shabbily and now she is a companion to a blind woman and why? What was it all for? Why should she pay for my... my stubborn, selfish love for a weak man? Sarah... You mustn't be so hard on yourself. Mustn't I? Why? Perhaps I've asked for all this, Joe. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming ready or not? Oh, Lid, you was meant to hide. Go on, go and hide, and I'll count again. No, I don't want to play no more, Key. I'm too old for games now. Go find our Daisy. Go on. What are you going to do? I don't know. Think a bit. Take a walk along cliffs. Can I come? Oh, Lee, go on. I promise I'll be good. I won't not to you, honest. No, I want to be on my own, Kitty. I've got a lot of thinking to do. I'll be going back to school soon and I've got to be ready. I'll take you for a picnic, though, I promise. I'll take you on the last day of the holidays. Oh, will you? You promise? I said so, didn't I? Well, go on, then. Go find our Daisy. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Another top up. A little, thank you, Joe. Uh, Sarah, I know now is probably not the best time to tell you this, but I feel I must. I've made my mind up. I'm retiring from the council and clearing out. Is it your health? Oh, dear, Joe, has it got much worse? Oh, better. That's just it. I'm going back up north. I've got an organising job on Tyneside. They can spare me very well. After all, they hardly know what I'm really like. They've only, they've only seen a sick man. Joe, you can't do it. It'll kill you in a couple of years. 
Sarah, I know what I want, and whatever I want, it's not going to be found here in the South Riding. You know, Joe, you remind me of the old Spanish knights who greeted each other with the wish. May God deny thee peace and give thee glory. That's it, isn't it? That's you and I, Joe. We'll have to work for a revolution, Sarah. You're a grand girl, but I don't think you're a politician. You say ends, but not means. We can't build anything permanent on these foundations. And that's why you're leaving? At the end of the week, yes. Oh, what am I to do without you? <laughs> you are my only true friend here in the South Riding. Come in. Come in. It's me, Miss Ben. I hope you don't mind me coming. It's just I wanted to show you something. It's my satchel, miss. See, it's all polished up and ready. Here's pencils and spare paper, ruler. I know there's a rubber here somewhere. Of course, that's if old Lenny had it. Oh, here it is. They're all brand new and all. Here's a section for me exercise books. And textbooks go here. Oh. Miss, I didn't mean to upset you. I only wanted to show you, to thank you for getting me here, for letting me come back to school. Yes, it's very nice, Lydia. It's kind of you to show me. You looking forward to coming back? Oh, yes, Miss. M Miss Burton. Miss Burton, do you, do you mind me asking you something? No, oh, not at all. You should never be afraid to ask questions. Well, well, that's just it. I want to ask questions. I want to ask questions all the time, especially to him. My dad. Dad, uh... And why do you think that is, Lydia? Because I know he doesn't know the answers, miss. Just like my mum didn't. And that scares me, because I know he's proud of me and that, but he knows he's lost me. I can't explain it. It's not that I'm ashamed of where I've come from, but it's not who I am. I mean, I can be like you, can't I? I can go to college, get away from here. I can have a better life, can't I? Is that really a question, or do you think you know the answer? I don't know, miss. I only hope I do. Excuse me, won't you? Shall I go? No, wait. Hello? Oh, Mrs Beddows. Yes, I've heard. No, no, I'm not. I have Lydia Holly with me. Yes, yeah, she's fine. She's looking forward to coming back to school as much as we are having her. Yes, I will. Yes. Well, I rather thought you might. No, really. Yes, until tomorrow, then. Yes, I'm quite fine. Goodbye. I should go, Miss, Miss Burton. Are you all right, Miss? Can I get you anything? No. No, I'm, I'm just a little cold. Is it cold in here? Well, the window is wide open. Shall I close it for you? No. No, I want to hear the sea. I'm fine, really, dear. You get off home before it gets dark. Well, it's early two o'clock, miss. Is it? She seems so late. Lydia. Yes, miss? You must never be afraid to ask questions. Because questioning does not mean the end of loving, and loving does not mean sacrificing your intelligence. Vow as much to love your family as you like. Yes, serve to the death if necessary. But I'm telling you, Lydia, do not ever forget to question. Your father needs to search for answers as much as you need to ask questions. I must go on living. 
the new school building is my dream and I need to fulfill my dreams. Lydia is returning to school and she's sure to receive a major county scholarship and then go on to college. I have saved Lydia Holly and failed Robert Kahn. But I will have to go on living with my treachery and try not to betray myself. Oh, Lyd, wasn't it nice of Miss Brindley to make us that picnic here? Oh, it's going to chuck it down soon. Kitty, come on, we better be heading back. Liddy, look, over there near that bit of sacking. See, it's a man's boot. A dead man's boot. Oh, it's just a bit of rubbish washed up by the sea. Come on, we better be heading back. Put that stick down, Kitty. I want to get that boot. Ugh. Oh, Liddy, it's not empty. Oh, it's full of mud, Barmy. Come away. Come on. I said run. Run. What is it? Oh, what is it, Lid? I don't know, but we'd better tell someone. Come on, I said run. Oh, God. Oh, bugger, Liddy, we're horrible. Oh, stop swearing and run faster. Oh, Lid, I'm scared. Did you see his eye? You, you never saw its eye. You saw its foot, Barmy. Sure up now. You'll only scare yourself. We've got to get back before it rains, else rain might wash it away. I think it's Mr. Khan. What if you did quarrel? What if you didn't like him? That's no reason for insulting his dead body. Mrs. Bennett, please, it's not like that. He was one of your governors. He's having a public funeral. The coroner said it was death by misadventure. It's only decent to go. I don't want to. I dislike funerals. I hate this public display about death. Oh. I don't intend to go. I can't possibly get away. It's a new school term. I have oh, to stop do. it. For goodness sake, don't go then. But don't talk to me like that. Don't you see? I can't stand it. I've had enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's getting late. I really came partly to talk about Midge. You know, Lord Sedgemeyer came a fortnight ago. We had a talk. He wants to take her to live with them in Shropshire. So I've got to give notice, I suppose, of her leaving here. She was always a little snob. Oh, Miss Burton, why must you be so? You used to like him once when Midge was ill. Surely you... Surely. I liked him once. Then why can't you behave decently? You know I loved him. You know he was my friend, more like a son to me. Can't you at least keep back your prejudices until he's in his grave? Do you think it's easy for any of us to face it? You quarrelled with him about politics and so on, but we who loved him, we shall have to stand there and hear those words and see those flowers and listen to the rector talking about death swallowed up by victory, not knowing... Not knowing whether perhaps he failed in the end. You mean he killed himself? How can we tell? It wasn't like him. But all that about making his will and the insurance and his dealings with the bank and coming to me. Why did he fix everything up so if he didn't know, if he hadn't planned... You think suicide is sin, then? Oh, perhaps not exactly a sin, but it was unlike him. He never shirked at anything, no matter how unpleasant. It worried me when he gave me this brooch. It was, it was Muriel's. Worried me when he asked me to be the guardian. Why did he do it just then, if he hadn't known? That's what I've asked myself day and night. Why did he do it? Because he knew he was very ill. Ill? Robert Kahn? Nonsense. He never had a day's illness in his life. I would have known. He had angina pectoris. What? Two attacks. The second was a bad one. I happened to be there once when he had an attack. I... I don't understand. Why didn't he tell me? It may not have occurred to you, but I was in love with Robert Kahn. 
Oh, he wasn't with me, not at all, though I think he liked me. At the beginning of the summer holidays, I went to Manchester to do some shopping before I went down to my sister. I had taken a room at the Piccadilly Hotel. I found Robert Kahn there, too. He didn't know I would be there, of course. He had drunk a good deal. I took care that he did. What followed was entirely my own doing. Oh, please, can't you just tell me? Were you his lover? No. No, we were not. Don't you understand? I wanted him to be drunk because if he was drunk, he might forget for an hour that he did not love me. I made him dance. Then more drinks. Do you understand? Then I asked him to my room. Oh, God. Of course, he accepted. In the circumstances, it was inevitable. As he reached my door, he had an attack. He was very ill. I thought he was going to die. He had nitrate of amyl in his room. I got it for him. By morning, he was better. He went back to his own room. I don't know what he did the next day, but he must have known that his life might end at any moment. I see. Please go on. He was not my lover. He was ill too soon. I had meant him to be. I tell you here and now that I would have given all I have for one night, one hour. Why did you tell me this? Because you loved him. And I thought you should at least know the truth about him. He was a sick man. He knew he must die. He tried to make preparations for that. He did not kill himself. We never met again till the day he died. He never wrote. He avoided governor's meetings, everything. Then suddenly, on the day of the inspection, he came to scold me about the new school buildings. We were quarrelling when Miss Teasdale arrived. He rushed out, and she asked me, is that one of your local problems? Problems? <gasps> My God, so you see, I have lost everything. Even his good opinion of me. And it's my own fault completely. Wait, wait a minute. What time was it when he called on you? In the morning. Miss Teasdale came about half past eleven. Why? What difference can it make? I'm just remembering it was the afternoon I saw him. Yes. And he gave me a message for you. A message for me? Yes. I never thought it important. In one way, it wasn't. Just, just a light word. He said, give her my love. Tell her she's a grand lass. I wouldn't miss quarrelling with her for the world. Oh, I'm sorry. It went out of my mind. I thought it half a joke. I never thought it might be important to you. Oh, I see. But I know he liked and admired you. He told me once that he wished Midge had half your courage and generosity. Oh, but he altered when I behaved like a bitch and he'd like... Oh, a be quiet. I won't have you say such things. It's ugly and horrid and it doesn't help. He didn't. He admired you. Why did he never speak then? Why did he leave me alone, thinking he hated and despised me? It was cruel. One word, only one word, just oh, to show... Oh, can't you see? He wasn't the kind of man to talk like that. He hardly spoke a word, unless it was in temper, when silence would do. Then I expect he was a little embarrassed, too, for being ill with you, perhaps even a little ashamed. <laughs> he hadn't much imagination, you know. He didn't think much of what other people might be feeling, or what effect he might have... Made on them. He often hurt me, too, without meaning it. Just by not seeing, by being rather blind. <laughs> so don't worry. Nobody despised you. And you mustn't despise yourself anymore. I cannot bear this pain. I want to give up teaching. I want to go away. I think I want to die. Who are you to think you can get through life without pain? Did you expect never to be ashamed of yourself? Of course it hurts you. And it'll go on hurting. <laughs> you needn't believe much what they say about time healing. I've had 70 years and more of time and there are plenty of things in my life I still can't bear thinking of. 
You've just to get along as best you can with all your shames and sorrows and humiliations. Maybe in the end it's those things which are the most use to you. They'll make you a better teacher anyway. I shan't teach any more. Oh, yes, you will. You can't take all your experience and education and training and throw it all up just when you might be of some service. I'd call that cowardice. Tell me, why should I love him like this? He was everything I disliked most. Reactionary, unimaginative, selfish, arrogant, prejudiced. Yet he filled the world for me. I can see nothing else now. You've got him wrong. It may have been all that you say he was, but he was much more. He was courageous and kind and honest. He was, in dealing with people, the gentlest man I knew. He knew all about loving. He let a woman destroy his whole life, yet never blamed her. He never ran away from failure. He never whined, he never deceived himself, never blamed others when things went wrong. In the end, it's not politics or opinions. It's, it's those fundamental things that count, the things of the spirit. In the end, in what end? In no end I've ever heard of. Ah, uh, perhaps not. Perhaps in an end too far away for us to dream of. So you see, you've got to stay and work here, Sarah Burton. Because you belong to the South Riding and he loved it. <laughs> As I see it, when you come to the bottom of it all, all this local government is, is, is just working together. Us, ordinary people against the troubles that afflict all of us. Poverty, ignorance, sickness, isolation, madness. And you can help us. You, who belong here and who were clever and went out into the world to gain your education. But I've done so badly... I hate myself so. Well, quite a few of us have got through life without too good an opinion of ourselves. And yet we manage. I must go. So, you'll come to the funeral tomorrow? Yes. And stay on and work here? Yes. Goodbye, my dear girl. God bless and comfort you. South Riding by Winifred Holtby was dramatised by Jill Adams. It starred Sarah Lancashire, Philip Glenister, Carol Boyd, Susan Cookson, Maggie Tagney, Donald McBride, Lucy Beaumont, Anne-Marie Hosell and Maya Foa. It was directed by Melanie Harris. Melanie Harris. Melanie Harris. Melanie Harris. Melanie Harris. Melanie Harris.